Here's a quick overview of frequency modulation. The premise behind this is that we have one oscillator. This is currently our oscillator. Uh, I didn't write this encapsulation. I brought it. Um, I think I found it on the Max forum. But it's really, um, really helpful for varying the wave shape. So it allows you to have a sine wave, gradually create that into a triangle wave, a square wave, uh, and then a sawtooth wave. So this is a good little module that you'll be able to use anytime you need a signal or an oscillator. Uh, in max. Uh, but in any case, we have one oscillator called the carrier. It's given a carrier frequency in this case of a thousand hertz. Um, I'll put these at zero for now. And it's just a sine wave. What we're doing to that frequency then is modulating it, so we're gradually ramping it up and down. That modulation is controlled by the modulating uh, oscillator. And this oscillator has a frequency and an amplitude. Those are really important. Um, just a quick uh, review of some of the fundamentals uh, of signals and max. The cycle object, the default amplitude um, is one. So if we give this a frequency, let's say of 0.5, uh, and then create a number, number box, to see what's happening here. Uh, at this frequency, one half times per second, uh, it's generating a signal that goes between, creates a sine wave between negative one and one. Okay, if we create, if we change the frequency to one, now it's going between negative one and one, one times per second. So this is the frequency and the default amplitude uh, is between negative one and one. Now we can of course change this amplitude. If we were to multiply that signal by a different number, every number that's coming out of there would then be, be multiplied by whatever value you give it, and it will change the signal. In this case it's being multiplied by zero. All these numbers are being multiplied by zero, and the corresponding signal is zero. If you give, multiply it by one, we have the exact same pattern. Uh, if we multiply it by 2, then what's happening is at a rate of 1 cycle 1 times per second, it's going between negative 2 and 2. If we multiply it by 300, it goes between negative 300 and 300. Now this is really not useful when we're dealing with oscillators that are in the audible range. Oscillators that we're going to be hearing are generating audible signals, but it's very useful uh, when we're using oscillators to modulate other parameters in max. In this case, we are using this oscillator to modulate the frequency of our carrier oscillator. So by uh, controlling the amplitude, amplitude over here, we're able to determine the range at which this oscillator uh, is oscillating and the rate or the frequency at which, it, which it's oscillating. So a frequency of one, and let's say a range of 100, or an amplitude of 100. This waveform is down here. This up here is the frequency. Uh, so one times per second, it's going between negative 100 and 100. And we're taking this signal, so this little unit right here is exactly what we just created in the other window. Taking the signal, multiplying it by this amplitude. But then this is generating uh, a signal that just oscillates oh, missing a tilde number tilde it's creating a signal that just oscillates between negative 100 and 100 one time per second we can change the frequency now it's oscillating between negative 100 and 100 one half times per second okay and what we're doing with that signal is then we are adding it using the plus tilde object to this number so we have a frequency we're continuously adding, uh, there's a number that's being continuously added or subtracted to it. Um, and so the result is uh, modulation around a center frequency. So we have the number 1,000, it's in the left inlet. As the right inlet changes, it adds and subtra subtracts from it, adds to it or subtracts from it, um, whatever this number is, the amplitude of the modulating frequency. 
And so we have essentially a number that's modulating between 900 and 1100, one half time per second. We can do that one time per second. You can change it, do, you know, obviously change the variables however you like. And you can hear this. If you change the amplitude, it'll do a glissando over a wider range. If you do it the same as the carrier frequency, it's going to go all the way down to zero and then back up. And so it goes an octave above it and then down to zero. Curiously, as we saw in class, if you do it, if you modulate by a number larger than this frequency, I'll take this down so that uh, we have a more reasonable number. Um, in this case, it's subtracting 880 from 440, so you're going to get a negative number, and you're just going to get the absolute value of it right here. So uh, when it goes uh, into the negative territory, um, max just takes the absolute value of that um, of this number. So you get this really interesting irregularity. So this little bump right here should be actually going below zero. Anyway, that's just the, the logic behind what's going on here. If you have a mod depth of 10, it almost doesn't almost doesn't change. Okay. Uh, now the interesting thing, really interesting things happen when you change the mod rate. Right now we're hearing low frequency uh, the modulator frequency is a low frequency oscillator, so we can hear these little glissandi. Um, if we were to increase this into the audible range, all of a sudden, you get a much more complex tone. A lower uh, mod depth will result in only hearing the fundamental frequency. And as you increase the mod depth, the first couple uh, additional tones that you hear are the sum and difference of these two frequencies. And then you get into increasingly more side bands. And you get really rich. really rich timbres. Um, now keep in mind all we're doing here is modulating one sine wave with another so if you change the waveform let's go back to a uh, low frequency oscillator so we can hear what's happening right now we're the sine wave is just ramping up and down ramping the frequency up and down but if you were to make this uh, let's say a sawtooth wave You see it starts high, goes suddenly high, and then gradually goes down. A square wave goes high, and then immediately goes low. So the result, again, is a little bit different when you go into the audible range. We get some interesting timbres. And then, of course, we can also change the wave shape of the... Uh, carrier frequency. And you get some really bizarre. Really nice noisy. And you can see now how just having one point of interaction with max MSP being the uh, the mouse. Um, it's really limiting, so um, I would encourage you to think about uh, ways of either connecting hardware or using the key object or the mouse state object, mouse state, which needs a poll message, um, in order to 
um, connect uh, more intuitive like interfaces into Max MSP and control all of these variables. You essentially, with these five variables, carrier frequency, modulating frequency, modulation depth, uh, and then the two waveforms, you uh, you can create just a, a, an incredible, incredibly versatile collection of sounds. Um, I wanted to just go over a few small things uh, that are present in this patch that might be confusing, but that uh, are actually really helpful. These R um, objects are just wireless sends and receive. Uh, they're essentially wireless patch cords. It goes receive and send, and it's patch cords uh, without connections. Uh, that's just to say that, for example, this R with an argument of frequency, if you had an S frequency object, and you sent this information, it would send it from here to here wirelessly. I mean, not, you know, not wirelessly, but without a patch cord. This is useful when you have um, a lot of numbers that you want to manipulate, um, and you want to keep all those numbers in one place. It's often useful to have all your variables, sort of one area in max where you're controlling all the variables. Um, it's also useful for sending one number to multiple locations. You know, if I were to duplicate this 12 times or something, and I wanted the same mod rate for each of these uh, FM synthesizers, then I could have a single receive mod rate, and I wouldn't have to have patch cords crossing the entire uh, the entire max patch. Um, the added benefit is that you can use these kinds of messages with a semicolon, um, and if you have um, receive objects, you can type the arguments of those receive objects, and a value, moderate 1200, 93.5, um, frequency 1200, moderate uh, 35, and that's Now, if you were to click on these, you can uh, send all these messages at the same time. So this is a really good way to generate presets. If you find some values uh, that you like, you can generate all the presets right here. We can even have, let's say, an R uh, mod shape. And this will receive a number between 0 and 127. Um, mod shape 12. Mod shape 90. I think this will work. Yep. Interesting. Uh, so you can really, you can see how all this is highly customizable um, uh, with these. And then of course you can have these be presets with a select object, as many of these as you want, or with a key object, whatever, and you can trigger these as need. Um, we also saw in class today um, that you can modulate between these and get some really really interesting results. Um, by modulate, I mean just gradually ramp between these values, let's say, and these. So if we were to use a line object with a variable, when this receives the argument for frequency, it's going to replace this variable, and then it will ramp to that value over the course of one second. And we can do the same with moderate and with of course everything um, and you get this really cool sort of warping sound uh, and a little bit more more nuance uh, 
this of course can be a second variable you can change it to whatever you want So with these really basic uh, parameters, these really basic tools, you can create a really uh, personalized, uh, very versatile instrument. Um, these are just to visualize the signals. You should be relatively familiar with these, uh, but this is just a oscilloscope and to see the spectrum, the spectra of the sound. You can see that there, it generates really rich overtones. Uh, it's a very, this is a very efficient kind of synthesis where you only need two oscillators to generate these really complex tones. So imagine, you know, to generate this without a diverse subtractive synth would require a lot of, um, a lot of CPU and a lot of work, uh, but you get incredibly versatile, uh, enriched sounds. I love watching the sonogram here uh, with only two oscillators. So again, understanding the logic is key. Um, and if you have any questions or anything, uh, feel free to, to email me. Take care.